people didn't want to talk to me very much after that. It was a pretty difficult time. You know, it's the last race of the year. You don't have a, a chance to redeem yourself. We lost the championship by one point, so I tried to not be too hard on myself, but yes, I, I, I am very hard on myself, especially, I mean, this, it's something that doesn't leave your mind very, very quickly. My failure? Nandaruna. I almost failed out of high school twice. I had a really bad year where everything went wrong. Oh yeah, everybody makes mistakes. It broke all the bolts and, uh, and the structure basically collapsed. Well, I made a formal apology. I can remember when I was out at the go-kart track one day. You know, you use a stopwatch and time the lap, and... I remember I kept uh, giving myself like one second less, like, okay, was that 41 seconds that time? Was that 40 seconds that time to get around? I like to be able to see the improvement, and with racing, it's very obvious. You know, I can see the direct result of my effort. We're in Homestead, Florida. This is my first IndyCar race, and there was a crash. I don't remember anything, um, but the car was on fire, and you know. My brain was covering up for the fact that this was a bit of a heightened situation that I shouldn't be aware of what's going on right now, but. I woke up in the medical center, and there was a bright light above me, and Father Bob is over here to the left, and I've got needles in my arm, and you know, it's, um, so that was probably the worst moment. You're driving your car, and you feel frightened a little bit. We bump up against that feeling as much as we can to try and push that limit further and get comfortable there and then push it again. Um, so, you know, you're, you're constantly on the brink of, of crashing because that's the fastest. So much of racing is failure. Failure is a, a, side, a byproduct of pushing the envelope. You push the envelope of performance until things fail. When you fail, it's not necessarily looked at as a bad thing as long as you learn from it and make something positive out of it. Uh, Honda's not a car company. Of course, Honda started as a motorcycle company. More than anything, Honda's an engine company. From the president on down throughout its history, it's been engineering oriented. Engineers, for better or worse, always want to change things and advance. この when Honda Performance Development first started racing in 94, the program was a massive failure. Uh, we had a lot of engine problems, we had a lot of engine failures. We blew the, uh, the turbocharger off the engine in several places. The corner workers are reporting that there's a fire in the left rear of his car. Say 15,000 revolutions per minute. Sometimes the whole bottom end would blow out of the engine. That's that Honda engine car, and it is in trouble now. I mean, just blew into like a million pieces. Could it be more trouble for the Honda engine? In the seat, in like a five-gallon bucket, was all these engine parts from, from the, everything that was blown out of the bottom of the engine. I mean, there was pistons, there was con rods, or pieces of block and bearings and stuff. 
<laughs> and uh, one of the Japanese engineers that was here on assignment was all concerned because he was afraid that there were other pieces of the engine out there on the racetrack that they, f that they failed to pick up. And he was all concerned that other our competition would learn our know-how. <laughs> and we'd lose our confidentiality. And I'm saying, what's there to worry? I mean, there's, no one would even want to know what's in our engine. <laughs> there were a lot of failures in 1994. And those failures led to a new engine in 1995. We improved it step by step to a point where finally in 95, we won our first race. In 96, we won the championship. Honda now is the sole supplier of engines for the uh, IRL, or the Indy Racing League. We'd really prefer to have some competition in the series, uh, but perhaps uh, the Honda success drove some of them out. Maybe they'll come back. One of my worst ideas happened the very first week I worked at Honda. And my boss said, OK, I'm going to Japan in a couple of weeks, and I need proposals for new colors for all the 96 models. It's like Civic and Accord and Accord Wagon. And, and um, I just completely panicked because, <laughs> I mean, literally, I was asked to do more in my first week at Honda than I had done four years at my previous job. I had been really wanting to do an orange car, really wanting to do orange. and. Um, decided, okay, 96 Civic, we're gonna do orange. Really without doing my homework completely, I proposed this color. I get in this big room and it's, you know, sales, engineering, and design, it's the balance of powers where everybody makes the decisions, you know, to see what goes into mass production. And I think they're all looking at this new person, this new designer thinking, well, maybe we should trust her. So they went ahead and they put the orange into production, and the dealers flipped. It's like, what is this hideous, hideous color? It's like, stop production of this immediately. That's OK, right? I mean, if you've got a boss that's telling you to uh, take a chance, and if you make a mistake or fail, you know, just, just try not to do it again, and uh, try to learn from that. Uh, that's that's a good thing. I mean, you take chances, you know. I think everybody in that room understood they were taking a chance, but they were willing to take that chance. I, I tell him, well, Edison, you know, Edison trying to do the light bulb, and he said, I never failed. It just didn't work 10,000 times. And that 10,001, it lit up. So it's, if you look at it that way, were those failures? <laughs> 